and welcome to Coach World TV. My name is Terry Yaffe, and tonight as my guest, I have Sue Lawley. Hi, Sue. Hi, Terry. How are you? I'm great. Good. So, great. it's three times is a charm. <laughs> <laughs> Sue and I were going to be on the show in February, and we had that huge storm, so we canceled. That's right. And then we kind of got mixed up with our dates in June or July. Right. So, here we are tonight. Commitment and, and endurance yep, got exactly, us here. <gasps> exactly. And um, Sue is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. I'm so happy to have her finally Thank on the you. show. I'm thrilled to be here, Thank Terry. Thank you. So Sue is an executive coach, and she's head of the coaching practice for Lee Hecht Harrison in the Northeast. Big time person here, <laughs> really. Um, so. One of the things we talked about was what was your aha moment when you decided that coaching was the path for you? What got you here? Yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting story. I was working on Wall Street at the time. Wow, okay. And um, there was a reorganization within my firm, uh, as many listeners will probably relate to. Mm -hmm. and. I was offered a position to stay there, but a lot of the investment bankers that I worked with said, you know what you're really good at? You're really good at helping people connect. You're really good at helping people see their way clear to what they should do, what their skill sets are, and you really should look into starting your own business and really helping people identify mm -hmm. what they want to do. Uh, in their lives, in their careers, and also within the jobs that they're in, how to get better at it. So that's really, I'm an accidental coach, you might say. <laughs> you know, I think most of us are. Right. Um, it, but the interesting thing is, is that somebody actually laid out a bit of a road map for you. Right. By, by saying that. That's right. It was unsolicited feedback mm -hmm. that was very helpful. Uh, I didn't go seek it out. They, you know, called it mm -hmm. out to me. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I think that's a little bit what coaching is all about, is helping people see things about themselves that they otherwise wouldn't see. So somebody shone a light in a that's place right. where you didn't see it. That's right. So you started your own business. What business was that? So my husband and I had a consulting firm called the Camelot Group, and we ran that together for about 14 years. I'm happy to say the marriage survived. <laughs> We're still married, uh -huh. and we had a lot of fun. His background was technology. My background was general management mm -hmm. and HR. Mm -hmm. And so part of what I did in that business was I wanted to be a partner that paid for myself. So I farmed myself out a couple of days a week to a firm I was working in New Jersey at the time uh, to do coaching and training. And that's how I started getting really uh -huh. more skilled in this business. Uh -huh. So Camelot Consulting was more of a consulting company? That's right. Okay. S and you consulted in the areas that you knew? Mm -hmm. So we, we had clients throughout the tri-state area. Okay. And we did uh, technical work and we also did training and coaching and staffing okay. is what we did. So to round out your experience, did you go to a coaching school? I was certified by the firm in New Jersey. It was a firm called Seagate Associates. Mm -hmm. They had an internal program on what coaching meant to them. Uh, so I did that first. And then later, I got affiliated with the International Coach Federation and took classes and actually began a training program for Lee Hecht Harrison. You began the training program yes. for Lee Hecht Harrison? Yes. So we now, at my right. firm, mm -hmm. uh, offer ICF courses, and I'm familiar with all those courses that we offer our coaches. So interestingly, I'm taking kind of a little bit of a side sidestep here. I actually met Sue mm -hmm. when I I oh, was is with the ICF. I'm past president, and I was president. But I was there for another organization that was looking to do some laser coaching with Lee Heck Harrison. And Sue sat across the table from me, right. and 
I told her what I did with the ICF and President, and that's when we started that's right. talking. That's when it we was met a few years ago, yeah. and um, how we could partner with them and what mm -hmm. we could do. And um, we have a couple of things that we've done, and I've gotten Sue on the show tonight, <laughs> which is great. So you talk about working with clients, and I think this was something we talked about at dinner. Mm -hmm. um, finding value creation and versatility. Mm -hmm. Right. So Could you expand on that? Sure, please? Terry. What I've come to learn over the years in doing coaching is that uh, what we try to do as coaches is help our clients create value. Some of that value is for them personally. I want to be a stronger leader. I want to be a better coach. I want to be a better manager of people. Mm -hmm. Some of that is for the people around them, their peers, their bosses, mm -hmm. and some of it is for their organization, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. It might be a small company, it might be an entrepreneurial venture, it might be a startup, or it might be a large corporation. But when coaching is done well, I think it creates that value for all the players, all the stakeholders around mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think it does for the clients? as well the person yeah. being coached yeah. so I think what it does for them is it uh, one of the first things I think it does that's a value <laughs> is it hits the pause button mm. so in today's world everything is so frenetic we're on the go we're, we're responding to emails all day long we're in meetings one after the other we're on the phone we're responding to people mm -hmm. it's very hard to uh, really clearly see the bigger picture to really look at a strategic mm -hmm. view of what's the long range view for whatever it is that whatever initiatives you have in front of you. So I think coaching in a way stops the clock mm -hmm. and it makes mm -hmm. you, you know, step back and really take a hard look at how you're spending your time, mm -hmm. how you're making decisions, uh, what your agenda looks like mm -hmm. and what it should look like. And I think coaching serves a very big purpose by doing those things. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree, and I think for anybody, we all love to talk about ourselves. Right. And where else do they come and have the space to be heard right. and not to be made wrong right? Um, and not have somebody tell them what they should do or what they shouldn't do, which right. we're all so accustomed to, mm -hmm. um, but an opportunity to really show up in a way that's going to serve them mm -hmm. and what their desired outcomes right. would be. I think you raise one of the most important points, Terry, <laughs> which is that coaching has to be done in a framework of being completely non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That we as coaches are not uh, looking at a person's choices and deciding is that the way I would have done it or disagreeing I, you know they make their own choices right. and we are there to support them in their agenda where they're trying to get to and to help them move forward uh, so I think that whole area of really uh, being uh, giving them non-conditional support mm -hmm. so that we can help them move the needle on where they right would like to go is a critical part of the process. Although we may think those <laughs> Well, this is true. <laughs> but, this is, but we have to have develop right, that right, poker, right, exactly. poker face, you right, know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I coach, you coach primarily in person, I gather. Right. I coach primarily on the phone, which makes it a lot easier. Right. Um, but it is really training your mind mm -hmm. to be present Mm -hmm. and to really be listening in to what the client is saying and not saying. That's right. Because I think it's what they're not saying mm -hmm. is, is probably more relevant than what is being said. It's more telling, right. and I couldn't agree more. I think what the client fails to say, mm -hmm. omits, leaves out, skips over, mm -hmm. Uh, doesn't underscore, gives a light touch, mm -hmm. very often that's where you want to dig a little mm -hmm. deeper mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. usually more of a story behind right. that. Exactly. And one of my clients described coaching in a way that I'll never forget. She said after she'd been coached, uh, she said it's a little bit like an archaeological dig. <laughs> 
she said you know you're really digging down you're going through those layers and you're seeing what comes up and part of the coach's job is to sort of oversee that archaeological dig as the client is going deeper inside to really think about what's important to them I laugh because that's my expression is it really? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you were coaching her. <laughs> um, that's my expression. Um, we're on an archaeological dig. We pick up a rock. We look at it. Mm -hmm. We put it back. We pick up another yeah. one. Yeah. We put it down. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm laughing. I guess great minds think alike, yeah, right? But is I thought it was a very apt metaphor for the work uh -huh, that coaching right. involves. One of my clients told me that she thought coaching was like yoga for the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. I like that too. Um, so there's all kinds of metaphors that we could use right. um, for our clients. Um, and so when we think about doing executive coaching, which is primarily what you do, correct? Um, versus, I don't know how to put put them together. So transition, career, mm -hmm. business, or even personal coaching. Life coaching. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, is it all really the same because you're focusing on the individual? Mm -hmm. you, the individual may have desired outcomes mm -hmm. for what they want to achieve sure. with their business, mm -hmm. but a business is an, is an inanimate object. Right. It's right. the person that creates the success or failure of a business. Right. So, so I think if you think about it like a, a stage play, I mean, I think the person being coached is the protagonist, sort of the main character. Uh -huh. uh, when we do executive coaching, which is primarily what I do, there are a lot of other members in the ensemble in the cast, uh -huh. right? So there might there's the boss, and there are other key stakeholders, whether it be HR or the person's mm -hmm. direct reports mm -hmm. or their peers, mm -hmm. and they all play a role. So we, when you're doing executive coaching, you have multiple stakeholders, but your primary focus is that person that's being coached. I think, and I've done, I'm, I'm certified as a life coach too, and I've done some life coaching. And there, it's a little more freeing because you don't have all the other people to concern yourself with. Then you can focus 100% solely on the person being coached. When you focus on, in, in executive coaching, and life coaching, I have a thing about that mm -hmm. word. Um, mm -hmm. We call it empowerment coaching. Okay, thank you. <laughs> nice word. Um, you're always, f even though there are stakeholders and people that that one has to report to or is part of the team that is going to um, be activated by the coach, by the this person, mm -hmm. right? The, sure. the, the protagonist, protagonist right. and then there's the ensemble. Mm -hmm. um, and each, each group needs something from this particular Correct. client. Right. When you talk to the client mm -hmm. and work with them, are you, are you working with them on how they can up their skills, how they can strengthen this, how, how by doing that is going to mm -hmm. affect team A right. or team B? I think what we talk to them mostly about is their agenda. So what, where are they today right. and where are they They're trying to, to go? go? And what's in between. And what's in between. So you have to be clear on what you want and where you're heading and why you're heading there and what will happen once you get there. And I think once the individual shares that backdrop with their coach, then you know, a solid plan can be put together to think about, well, if I'm a business owner and I want to grow my business 40% in the mm -hmm. next two years, I know where I am today, I know where I want to go, what will I have to do to get there? Several things will come into play, right? Mm -hmm. I have to promote myself more. I have to be more visible mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I have to update my website. Uh, there will be a half a dozen things that fall out of that 
discussion of where a person's trying to get. And then the coach and the individual can get to work on really getting down to the nuts and bolts of, well, let's pick the two most important things mm -hmm. that will get you there. Right. And let's be very nuts and bolts and granular about what you're going to do. So if you want to update your website, what's going to happen, when's it going to happen? And so we become accountability partners right. Right. in that agenda. Okay. So they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. What, when, with so many people in in, on the sidelines, all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. What if the client has a different agenda than, than team A or team B mm -hmm. or the boss or the managing director? Mm -hmm. Then what happens? That will come become readily apparent <laughs> <laughs> when the person you're working with tries to carry out their agenda uh. and they meet unexpected obstacles because people who don't sign up to the picture of where they're heading will make it known. Right. And so sometimes coaching will lead to some conflict resolution work. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I have found that in, I would say, at least 60% of the coaching I've done, the presenting agenda or the presenting issue is not the final issue. Right. And other things mm -hmm. will crop okay. up that will take precedent mm -hmm. and will need to be resolved first before you go back to the agenda right. you want to carry out. Okay. So what if, and I know that I'm paying a little devil's advocate yeah, here, but I'm, I'm just digging yeah. a little. Sure. What if, so you work with a client and let's say he or she, again, uh, knows that they want to go from point A to point B and they have to brand themselves. Mm -hmm. Say it's an entrepreneur. Sure. They have to brand themselves. They have to get their website up and running. Mm -hmm. They have to go out and network. Mm -hmm. And what if the person doesn't know how to show up with the networking, mm -hmm. how to brand themselves? They have a self-esteem issue or a worth. So sure. that's where, again, I'm trying yeah. to circle no, yeah, back I to. I think you're on to something very important mm -hmm. because. Who they are. Sometimes what a coach will do is shadow a person. You know, uh -huh. we okay. would stand in the back of the uh -huh. room, sit in the back of the room to see how they do show up. Uh -huh. uh, I've had clients, even in corporate settings, say, I'm doing a town hall next week. Come and sit in the back of the room mm -hmm. and just okay. see how I show up mm -hmm. in a large group mm -hmm. or in a small group uh -huh. or in a staff okay. meeting. Uh, and so you do that and the gift that you're giving them is that unfiltered feedback right. of here's what I saw. Here are the things I saw that you did that were great. Mm -hmm. Here are the things that you saw that I think you could do better. Mm -hmm. Here's a word okay. you used that didn't work. It's like if we sat here after this interview and I said to you, Terry, tell me what I could have done better in this interview, you would have things to tell me. You would be able to tell me what would look good, what could be better, oh, etc. <laughs> <laughs> we're just here to have fun and just <laughs> impart some data and wisdom. Right. That's what we're here for. But a coach is right. like, a, we hold up that mirror right. to people. Right, right. Um, it's so, as I was telling Sue, I work with a lot of executives and entrepreneurs, but they come out of the umbrella of their companies. Mm -hmm. So it's their agenda. That's right. It's not, it's a not corporate stakeholders. Agenda. Or, and in a lot of cases, they want to figure out how to up their game, mm -hmm. how to play a bigger game. Right. And what's the stretch for them from going from here to here. And that's the place mm -hmm. that we really address. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, in the end, it's about reaching their desired outcomes. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, they're here, they want to get to here. That's right. Well, how do you get to there? Mm -hmm. You know, what, it, what needs to happen? Who do Why? you have to show up as? Where do you have to stretch? You know, what strengths um, might not be being utilized as much sure. as they need to be? Sure. And I think, you know, when people know where they're going, but they don't know how to get there, uh -huh. that's mm -hmm. where a coach can be enormously helpful mm -hmm. in, we don't give advice, right, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in letting them talk through what they see, how they want to get there, mm -hmm. maybe connecting them to mm -hmm. some resources. Uh, if someone needs to show up publicly in a different way, there might be some 
professional support mm -hmm. they need okay. to do that. So it's there's a little bit of connecting the dots for people, but also helping them really begin to visualize the journey that they're on and step by step how they're going to get there. When you coach executives, do they give you permission to really be open and honest with them? Where um, really naming what you might see? Mm -hmm. They absolutely do. And many of the people that uh, I personally coach and also the others that we had coach say to me when they ask for a coach, I want someone who's going to be very direct with me. Mm. I want someone who's going to push me. I want someone who's going to challenge me. I want someone who's different than me because mm -hmm. I know what a person who's like me, how they're going to react, mm -hmm. but I don't know mm -hmm. how the person who's the opposite mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. is going to react, and that's what I need to learn. So most people now, in the moment when they're getting that, feedback they asked for, it can be quite uncomfortable. Right. That, I, that was my next, yes. that was where I'm going next. So, you know, be careful <laughs> what, what you, you ask for, for right? right? But exactly. I think, you know, if it's done in a thoughtful, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. careful way, mm -hmm. with their best intentions at heart, people will think about it until they see you again and they'll digest that and they'll internalize it and then they will be grateful for the honesty. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think most people who ask for directness and mm -hmm. uh, feedback really do want it, but as coaches we have to kind of read their body language as uh, we're giving it to mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. to see how they're receiving right. it in the moment. And it's not always easy to give that kind of feedback. No. It really isn't. I mean, I coach by phone again, makes it easier, mm -hmm. although it's never easy to, right. to state what's there, mm -hmm. what they either, you know, that their truth is a perception, an assumption of belief. That's right. That, you know, they've seen for forever, mm -hmm. and it's hard to give it up. Right. What are they going to put in its, in its place? place? Yeah, and I think that's one of the greatest uh, values that we bring as coaches is to help people put their assumptions out here mm -hmm. on the table and examine them. Mm -hmm. To begin to think about, do those assumptions really serve them? Mm -hmm. Are they outdated? Were they true five years mm -hmm. ago, but they're mm -hmm. not true today? Mm -hmm. And uh, will they really get them to that next stage if they're really trying to up their game, or will they hold them back? So having that kind of conversation about what your beliefs and values, what mm -hmm. your uh, assumptions are, uh, you know, if somebody says, I can't delegate because I cannot really trust that people mm -hmm. can do it mm -hmm. as well as I mm -hmm. can. Okay. You know, what's right. underneath that right. belief? Exactly. And exactly. how is that holding you back? Mm -hmm. And is there another way mm -hmm. to approach it? Right, right. It's just what I like to say, and I'm sure you do, is a story. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a story based around a belief or an assumption. That's right. And we all have these amazing stories, mm -hmm. amazing that I mean uh, that I've heard every one of them <laughs> you know and when you listen it's it's obvious mm -hmm. that something had them put that story in place that's right um, and it's kept them from getting if they wanted to be successful in whatever that's kept them from getting to the, and and they you know keep trying to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the definition of insanity, right. doing the same, same thing, thing over and over and expecting different results. But I think that's what makes coaching such a fascinating profession, is the stories we hear mm -hmm. and, you know, the idea of the limiting beliefs or mm -hmm. the assumptions mm -hmm. really gets me thinking about the saboteurs, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the critics that we have that we right. carry around in our head, mm -hmm. and everybody has them. Oh, yeah. You know, we yeah. call them different things, right. they speak in different voices to mm -hmm. us, languages, but everybody <laughs> has them. So, you know, how do you enable someone you're coaching to quiet down that voice of mm -hmm. the critic mm -hmm. and raise the voice of the spirit who's driving them in a positive direction right. so that they mm -hmm. can then mm -hmm. feel confident to move forward? That's what we do. One of the things I do is, being on the phone, is I listen for the different voices. Mm -hmm. 
you can tell if there's the adult voice talking or if there is the child mm -hmm. voice talking. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's something you can bring to the type of coaching you do. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we do it uh, because we're in a meeting one-on-one -on -one just like you are. You know, those other players are not in the room with us, and uh, everything right. that we talk about is completely confidential. Mm -hmm. So you do find that a person will shift from the executive, mm -hmm. confident mm -hmm. voice mm -hmm. to the doubtful voice. Uh -huh. And you can pick that up, and you can pick that thread up and say, let's, let's go back a minute. To the, you know, they'll want to barrel on mm -hmm. to the next part of the conversation, and you can say, let's stop here and let's just take that last thread and talk about it, that last phrase, that last sentence, mm -hmm. that last thought. Mm -hmm. And you can hear it. I, I agree with you. You can hear it in the voice and you can hear it in their... Uh, I'm wondering if their persona, sh you know, I don't see it being on a call, but you do. Do they shift in, in, in stance, in how they, if they're sitting like mm -hmm. this and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, they go mm -hmm. into a different mode of, um, of presence? I think you can hear it in tone of voice, body language, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. choice of words that they use, uh, as well as what they're saying. You know, and coaching is not only just about the difficulties people have, I think there is also a positive multiplier mm -hmm. effect with mm -hmm. coaching where people when they're on a roll when they're doing well when they're learning right. from coaching right. I find that they share it with people around them they mm -hmm. get so joyful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the coaching mm -hmm. and what it's done for them mm -hmm. that they'll share it with mm -hmm. peers direct mm -hmm. reports and coaching when it's done well affects the whole constellation of people ah. not just mm -hmm. the one in the middle that you're coaching how do you know when you're doing great coaching and y when you're yeah. doing another type of <laughs> coaching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think you know you're doing great coaching yeah. when you walk out, you have felt a shift in the room. I think it's a lot about asking powerful questions. Mm -hmm. And when you ask a question that really stops somebody mm -hmm. in their tracks, you can feel the energy around that. And that's when you know it was a great coaching session when someone is thinking a little bit differently on the way out the door as when they came in. On that note, it's almost the end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> it's, I, we could have gone on and on. I really want to thank you. I want to thank you for being having here. Me. It's been really lovely. I've really enjoyed this thread. Same here. Really. And Thank you for joining us tonight, and I hope that you will see us in two weeks or every two weeks and come and play with us again.